How about I turn on the audio? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm joined by the fantastic Demis Rosley. Demis, how are you doing? Hey there. I'm good, thank you. How are you, Flynn? I'm good. Just uh, one of my main jobs here I forgot to do, turn on the volume. <laughs> um, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we're streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. We'd also like to play some music um, and say hello to everybody in chat. Um, if you're watching over on YouTube, jump over to behance.net slash live, find the uh, event that we're streaming from, come and say hello. We'd love to know uh, where you're tuning in from. It's always great to find out where people are tuning in from, from around the world. Um, and we're going to be hanging out with Demis. So we're here, it's Tuesday here in Australia, lunchtime, 12 p.m. And uh, we're going to be back on Thursday for part two. But uh, first things first, Demis, what has been going on since we've had you last on stream? It's been quite a while. When was that? That was I don't like no. Was it the beginning over a of the year, year ago, or was it more than that? I think it was uh, almost at the beginning of the pandemic, like in 2020. That's crazy. So I think it's it's been over a year. Wow. Yeah. So um, how are you? What has? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> good. good. Um, what have I been doing? I so last time I think the big news was that I quit my job. So I used to be. Yeah. I used to work in architecture. So now I've been a freelance content creator, photographer uh, for the past year, over a year now. Mm. Um, and yeah, I guess just taking it one day at a time, um, creating as much as I can, given that we can't travel because that's sort of what I used to do before the pand pandemic happened. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just trying to find content, make content. Um, yeah, just keep going. <laughs> Have you been able to travel at all like throughout throughout has there been any gaps because like yeah so um the only travel the only plane i've been on is uh, to go to cairns and port douglas um in queensland which is the photos we're going to be editing today they're from Perfect. there um great great uh topic <laughs> great question there flynn <laughs> um but yeah so that's sort of the only time and we got so lucky because i think one or two weeks after we got back this lockdown happened which is what we're in right now yeah. Um, so it was very fortunate that we were able to go and spend like a week away, which is great. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Was that for work or was that for, for fun or a bit of that both? You probably fun. always take your take your camera along and... Yeah. yeah. It's good when your work is fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's good <laughs> when you can, you know, you take some photos and you can put edit them and, you know, get creative with them and, and travel. And yeah, that's sort of, you know, why I enjoy doing this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 super cool. That's super great. And um, yeah, so what do you have in store for us today? I, I mean, we've been looking at this underwater underwater photography. Yeah, so um, uh, uh, I posted a reel last night on my Instagram, and I also also already posted the final shots before, like a, maybe two weeks ago or something. Right. Um, and I just wanted to show this process because the raw photos that come out of uh, the action camera that I was using was actually super like dull and the water when I was there was super clear but it's just like it came out this way the photos just turned out like this because right yeah it was just like um, unexpected so um, I'll share your screen I, sorry I wasn't sharing your screen before this will make a lot more sense yeah so it's quite like yeah so it's yeah quite so I can just show you here. so here's a before and after so here's the before of the of the photo that we're gonna be editing and then Here's the after. Hopefully, it'll come out like this. <laughs> wow! After I edit it, or after we edit it all together. Yeah. Uh, but it's just like, I guess, the importance of shooting raw, um, because you never know what you can get. So when I first looked at this, I'm like, cool. There's a turtle there. I can see. And when I was shooting it, I was like, that's amazing, because the turtle was right in front of my face. And so just trying to take as many photos as I can to get this turtle. Yeah. Um, and then luckily, because it was a raw file, I was able to save it to turn it into this. 
Um, wow. And again, similar, like this was a photo of my wife. We were just snorkeling. Um, and then again, like it's just similar process. <laughs> just like the difference is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So like yeah. was the water itself really murky or was that no. just kind of how the photo kind of came out? Yeah, I think it's just the photo because water, it's like air, right? So like there's like layers. And so like to get mm. depth, it's really, really hard um, for a camera to capture. Um, and so the the water was actually like apparently one of the clearest days of the year. Wow. Um, so imagine if it wasn't the clear, like it, it wasn't a clear day. So it yeah. would have been even harder to save. But we got super lucky and got super clear conditions. Um, and the photo still turned out like this. Um, <laughs> wow. So I was like, okay. Um, and then the last one we're going to do, uh, we're going to talk about is usually when you want to get a photo with like above the surface and below the surface, you would need like a dome in front of your camera. Right. To create like a larger surface area um, for, the sur for the camera to capture. Um, and because I don't have a dome and all I had was like a little Osmo action action camera um i took two photos like one photo above the ground above the water and one photo below the water and then i combined it in photoshop um so this was the before and then this is what the after looks like wow um so that's what we're going to be talking about today and so how you guys can also do this without needing like an expensive dome or you know that expensive gear um it's actually very easy to do Mm. Um, you just take a photo above the water and a photo just a little bit below the water and then you can merge them together in Photoshop to, to get this effect. And so is this like a, a DSLR waterproof type camera or is this... Um, no, no, no. It's an action cam. So it's like a very yeah. small, it's like a little GoPro pretty much. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's by it's from DJI, the, a different brand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think on a GoPro you could do exactly the same thing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so I guess I guess should we get started? Yeah, let's get in, let's get into it. A um, bunch of people joined since we started streaming, so if you do have any questions as we're as we're going along, feel free to throw them in chat, um, and we'll do our best to answer them as we go. Otherwise, you're stuck with my questions. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, I will be asking a lot as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, I guess like like any Lightroom tutorial, um, it's all about just your personal preference, right? There's no right or wrong answer. And it's all about just moving each slider one by one until you're happy with what it looks like. Mm. Um, so first I usually start with uh, profile correction. So I'm gonna tick that on to, to hopefully see what it can save. So right now, I think it's saving a little bit of the, the warping effect. Um, so that helps with the edges. Um, and Lightroom already has like the, the profile for your camera automatically set. So when you click that on, the, your camera should should automatically and lens get detected. Right. If not, you can try to find it in here in this list of cameras and lenses. Does Lightroom detect that by itself or is yeah. that something you have to kind of... Oh, so it usually has the data in there. Yeah, because I think when you take the photo in the metadata, it tells Lightroom what camera you use and what right. lens you use. Um, so, that, so that always helps. Um, and then the next thing I usually do is I would crop it because because I'm gonna be, I know I'm gonna be posting this for Instagram. I usually do four by five, um, and so here you can click four by five, um, drag the corner until it's vertical, and then you can toggle your guidelines by pressing O. And I usually use this like rule of thirds guidelines and try to I'm gonna just put the turtle in the center for now and see what happens. Um, something like this. So this is sort of the frame you're going to be working with. So the reason I like to crop first is because you're not, you know, working with other stuff around that might distract you from the final image. Yeah. Um, and then we just go about editing it. So like literally one slider at a time, um, see how we go. Well, we have um, a question from chat. Yeah. Um, looks like a lot of haze. Do you use a UV filter? So I didn't use it. I just literally used the camera. The I little didn't, camera, yeah. So this was my, literally my first time doing underwater photography. So I didn't know what to expect or what to get. So I guess for a lot of people doing first time underwater photography, this is probably what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, so uh, the first tip is to definitely shoot in RAW so that you can bring back um, any details that you, um, you know, you're losing. Um, and then 
yeah and then lightroom hopefully like in a few in a few different sliders you'll able to it's able to like bring back a lot of detail that you you're missing so do you um, ever shoot in jpeg or do you always shoot in raw for that reason i always shoot in raw for that reason yeah um yeah i used to shoot in jpeg which i regret a lot <laughs> because <laughs> a lot of my old photos they just like i can't really play around with it too much right um, especially now so, like in the pandemic when you're trying to like dig through yeah. to find and you're like damn if i only shot this in raw i could have brought this back or done something if done this something was shot in jpeg it. i don't think i would have been able to bring back as much detail i don't think right um so like as soon as i bring back like this contrast slider like if i just go all the way to 100 that already helps a lot mm. um so yeah don't be afraid to go all the way to the end sometimes sometimes it's it's good to do that um but yeah i'm just gonna keep playing around with each slider as I go. Um, like shadows, you can bring down um, whites. Yeah, maybe a little bit up and black. See, like as soon as you push the blacks down, it's already already like bringing back a lot of the detail. Mm. So that's already, you know, night and day, <laughs> the difference. Yeah. Um, then you can bring back some, some more detail by pushing like the texture. Um, and also the clarity as well, like just giving that bit of pop back. Um, and then I think dehaze will definitely help a lot because it's hazy. <laughs> so dehaze <laughs> is like pretty self-explanatory in what it does. So it just um, if there's a lot of haze in your photo, you can probably bring a lot of it back. Yeah. Um, get rid of it by, by using dehaze, which is a really, really useful tool. Yeah. Does what it um, says on the tin. She's exactly exactly yeah. uh vibrance and saturation um just seeing what happens when i when i push these sliders um yeah i think i like it like that mm. so far um and then you keep going down and then you start playing with like all these all these um hue color sliders so these things will tweak each color you know there's not much red so you don't really need to move that much um orange there's a little tiny bit um, yellow, you wanna, I, I wanna kind of bring that out a little bit because there's a few like yellow fish in there that, mm. that you could get a bit of pop of color. Um, greens, you can bring that down a tiny bit. But again, yeah, like it's personal preference, right? If you like your greens to pop out, if you like your blues to pop out, then you should move the sliders as you, as you like it. Yeah, and um, you got, got another question. Um, mm -hmm. from Anne, what detail can you not recover with a foggy image? Um, sometimes like, I guess like if, if you see down here, it's super, super dark, mm. um, later on, or I guess we could do this now. You could use a graduated filter to like push, bring that detail back up, but because it's super dark to begin with, it's sort of not going to be like the sharpest. It's going to have a lot of noise in there. So yeah. sometimes, so what I do is like, I try to bring it out a bit, but like, you don't want to bring it out too much so that it's crazy noisy. Mm. Um, so you, you, before it looked like this. So now if I just push up the exposure a little bit, you bring out a little bit. And if you bring out the shadows, you can also bring it out a little bit, but you don't want to bring it out too much because then it starts, you, you start to see a lot of the noise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think stuff that's like super dark, really really like black shadows and really really white highlights are the probably the hardest thing to bring back mm. um but usually a raw file should be able to bring it back quite nicely um does knowing that change like the way that you try to shoot like trying not to get too much dark darkness in like you'd rather it be on the lighter kind of blown outside more than the shadow a little side? bit yeah i think so um but sometimes I think different cameras do different things, right? Like sometimes um, different cameras like work better in the, the shadow side. Right. Um, and so sometimes you want to underexpose your shots um, and other cameras you want to overexpose. So like there's, I think you just got to know and play around with your camera, um, see what happens. Yeah. Um, I think the Sony's do better if you underexpose. Um, right. If, if you're in a really like tough situation, um, if you underexpose, you, you should be able to bring back the shadows a little bit more um but yeah i'm just playing around with each slider bit by bit almost there um 
Yeah. So some ciders, you can see the effect a lot more than others. Mm. Um, so like here, you can see like, you know, you can push the blue up, so the aqua up so high, you know, it brings that top corner really bright. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, it's just personal preference huh. to see what, what you like. Speaking of bright, your camera's just gone like bright green. Really? <laughs> yes. Is it still? <laughs> That's amazing. It's, yeah, it is. <laughs> My cat. What do you mean? Oh, there you are. You're back. Oh, I'm back. Good. Okay. Yeah. That was amazing. Oh, wow. I felt like Lightroom just edited your, like, massively <laughs> saturated your camera. I'm not the only one that saw that, right? That was that was great. Perfect timing. Um, I did, I did that on back. purpose? <laughs> it's probably just a loose cable or something, but it's amazing the effects you can get with stuff like that. It was great. <laughs> I love that. You just made my day. Um, <laughs> Ichiban is in chat. What's up, Ben? Hey. Um, great to see you. Um, he asked, uh, Demis, how long can you hold your breath? Oh, not very long. I'm not a... I don't think I would I would say I'm a good swimmer. <laughs> I... Uh, Got into free diving. This is, yeah, this is my first time uh, scuba diving because... I'm uh, not scuba diving, sorry, snorkeling. Right. Um, like, I had like a little fear of like really deep waters. Like, right. so if I like, if I'm like in the ocean, I look down and I can't see the bottom, it's like a little bit scary for me. So like, I was a little bit scared to do this snorkeling thing. But when I was there, it was actually like the coolest experience. Cause like, obviously it's not very deep. You look down and it's like another world down there. Yeah. Um, and it's so beautiful. Um, but if you go a little bit further, it literally just like goes down like so deep that you can't see the bottom and then I got freaked out so I just went back. <laughs> yeah, just off the off the reef, right? Like the shelf, the shelf. Yeah, drops exactly. Down and you can't exactly. see any further. Yeah, it's a little it bit. It goes from like 5 meters down to like 20 in like the span of like 2 seconds. That's where the sharks hang out. I actually saw a shark and I was like freaked out a little bit as well. Like it, it like swam underneath me. Yeah. And I was like what do I do now? <laughs> so I was like uh, but Don't luckily panic. like yeah, the 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 um, guides were just like the sharks are quite friendly, and apparently sharks don't like human meat. No. Um, no so sharks don't. like seals. Sharks eat seals, and because humans wear black wetsuits, it looks like it looks like we're seals. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, and um, be and and sh because sharks can't like touch you, they don't have arms to like tell what we are they just they bite you as like a taste test yeah I take a little nibble that's why so many people have like so like you know, mo you know most people will survive a shark attack because they just kind of bite you the problem yeah, is they and so they don't can rip when your they arms bite you, off when they when they bite you they don't like the taste so then they just kind of go away yeah usually yeah um, usually yeah and so yeah that's what I learned so that's a that's a good thing there you go survived your shark interaction and we got I was like thinking, why don't why don't people wear different colored wetsuits? You know, if you're yeah. gonna Bright orange. look like a seal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, a million dollar know. idea, Demis. It's just should... my my epiphany, you know, when I when they <laughs> told me that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, so I've kind of done like the general, like touches with the with each slider. So, what you can do next is play around with the graduated filters and the radial filters. Um to bring back like a lot of the more more detail and more color. So if I use this this button right here, the graduated filter, um, and I pull a thing from the corner, you can play have different effects. So you, obviously you can make it super bright to, to make it look like a light stream, a light source is coming from that corner. Yeah. Um, but you can also make it dark and like sort of bring back more of like the details in mm. that corner. Um, which is what I think I will will try to do. Um, so if I just like, I don't want you to worry about this too much. But you are bright mm -hmm. green again. Again, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's just your camera's down the bottom right corner. But I'll, I'll let you know in case it's a quick fix. But otherwise, we can just keep rolling. Am I still green now? Yeah, you're green. <laughs> <laughs> is it like that's back? It's back. You're fine. Do I look like the Hulk or something? What do I look like? It's 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 literally like as if you change the sliders and just put a photo filter over over yourself and everything in the entire like everything in your camera box. That's back. <laughs> what is going on? That's it's really fine. Strange. It's fine. Let's just keep rolling. It'll probably just flick in and out. Um, <laughs> that's how powerful Lightroom is, ladies and gentlemen. You can actually edit your entire room. 
It's <laughs> fine. We'll roll with it. Um, but yeah, like it, you can see that right now, I'm only affecting the top left corner just yeah. by playing around this with these um, few sliders here. Um, and then, but yeah, so you can see the, the difference. I'm just going to do a before and after. Like you can see how different that looks yeah, wow. already. Yeah. Um, another thing I like to do is add a vignette. So just to bring, just to give more like focus on the turtle in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and so I usually like to push the roundness and the feather all the way up to 100 and then literally just play with that mount and midpoint until I like the combination of the two, I guess. Um, and yeah, and maybe you can also add it's this rate. It's called a radial filter. Mm. And so you can draw a little circle around the turtle. And right now it's affecting the outside. So if you click here, invert, it's going to affect the inside. Um, and so you want to, if I want to like put more emphasis on the turtle, um, you can just like, you know, make it a little bit more brighter, add a little bit more contrast to it. And yeah, just like, what can you do to bring back, to bring the focus and attention of this image to this turtle? Yeah. Is the, the whole point of what I'm doing. And so it keeps, it keeps all the other effects that you made before underneath it, but you're adding yes. the, and, and so you're just adding a whole new like layer with the same options just to that yeah. specific kind just of Just around this circle. Area. Yeah. And you can also feather it. So like you can make it like fade out so it doesn't look as obvious or you can make it like really obvious and bring this feather all the way down. Like if I do that, it's going to look super obvious. Um, if I just click done, like you're going to see that there's like a an oval around it because yeah. there's no feather. Um, so if I go back in and then I increase the feather, it's going to, you know, make it the transition much more smooth. Nice. But yeah, I think that's sort of, I'm liking that. I yeah. think that's quite cool. Um, you can also do a lot more different things like, you know, bring bring more graduated filters from the corners to bring, you know, to, to emphasize different things that you want. But essentially it's like, if you see something and you, if you see a part of a photo that you think can be better, like just, you know, from your own, eyes or like you just judgment um you can grab these gra radial filters and graduated filters to, to tweak different parts of your image so you don't have to affect the whole thing so um usually it's the corners or there's a specific part like for example here it's super dark like before yeah, yeah i can go back to that right um i can go back to that graduated filter it's dark because i added a vignette but you can add a little bit more brightness to it and a little bit more shadow to it right to, to bring it back out. And like when you're thinking about the light, like the light's obviously coming like from the top left down. Is, is that usually where you're bringing the light? Cause you're talking about bringing light in from the other side as well. Like, do you have to be a bit cautious about that or? A, a little bit. So much? <laughs> but yeah, yeah like, as in like, you can tell the light's coming from the top left, but like, if you really want to emphasize that, I can, I make this super dark, right? Like you can see, like you can be like, Oh, it's, you know, it's the lights coming from that top left corner. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if you don't really, it's not really that obvious. I think, um, if you, if you bring this back up and just so you can see a little bit of like fish in the corner here, I think it's still okay mm. because it doesn't, it, it's not like you can still tell the lights coming from the top left, Yeah. but you're just bringing out a bit more detail in the top right. But yeah, I think that's looking good, better, that's awesome. much better yeah. than before. Much better, yeah. I mean, it's gone from completely unusable image, really, to yeah, like, exactly. looking really vibrant and colorful and, you know, beautiful. Especially if you think about something like on social media, like it needs to pop out, right? Like, you know. Um, exactly. People, it's yeah, very easy from to there scroll, as we know. To this. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, not a lot, but a few of the comments on the reel last night were just like, it goes to show you don't need to be a good photographer these days. You just need to be good at editing or whatever. But I don't <laughs> think that's true because without a good raw image or without the image itself, you still can't get this. You know what I mean? Like you still, yeah. you still need to be in that moment, taking the photo at the time with the right settings, 
you know, you still need to be able to use your camera. Yeah. Um, to be able to to save an image, right? Like, it, I in my head, I already knew what I was going to be editing. I already knew what I wanted, mm. but the raw file just came out to be like quite dull. Yeah. Um, and I guess with the help of with the help of editing tools like Lightroom and Photoshop, you can save a photo that you know you thought was going to be amazing but didn't come out amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's it goes both ways. Like you still need to be able to go out and take good photos, and if you have the skill to make the edit even better, yeah. then you know it it goes both and it and it helps you as a photographer to have all the skills. Yeah. Um, to to be able to do that. Yeah. And and as you as you said, like you took the photo and you knew knew what you were going for. So once you get back, you kind of go mm. through all the photos and go, okay, that's probably the closest to what I want. Now let's exactly. work on it to make it what. The intention of the photograph was in the first place so it's and like the relationship there, between yeah i'm yeah. trying to bring back the memories that i yeah that I had right yeah. so like in my head it looked like this <laughs> it might be like you know a fantasy but like i was amazed when i saw this turtle and i was like and and you know the corals the the great barrier reef like it was just so amazing that i wanted to bring that back in the edit yeah and so it's not necessarily like it's a bad photo then don't look at it ever again it's more about bringing back my memory of when i was there yeah um but yeah um so now that you have this um what you could do is you could copy this setting or you could even create a preset if you want if to do that you you click this plus icon here but you can just copy this setting um i'm gonna untick the local adjustments so that it doesn't it's just affecting the general vibe of the image mm -hmm. um and i'll probably untick the crop as well so that it doesn't affect the crop of the other photo so local adjustments does that like include the vignette and or no, so the vignette, turtle vignette is selection. part of the effects okay so that's fine yep uh, because if you crop an image the vignette will follow yeah okay but um, local adjustment affects the the radial filters, the gradu graduated filters, and if you do the paintbrush effect, um, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and which is what I did in the corners and, and on the turtle. So if I turn that off and I click copy, and then I go to another photo that I took, um, also underwater, and I can just click paste, and hopefully it already saves it, you know? Like, yeah, wow. Because the conditions are very similar. Mm. Um, in just a click and you just it just means you only kind of need to edit one photo yeah um, and here again I would probably also crop it you know like um, to 4 by 5 um, and just see like what I like so so, yeah, so sorry just back on the preset sort of thing so that's something that you might do like if you're doing a particular shoot like if you did a you did a shoot in the bush or something at a similar yep. sort of time of day you took a yep. hundred photos maybe there's three or four of them you really like yep. you might edit one and then go cool i'll just copy and paste all of those presets on so i don't have to start from scratch exactly and then go through and make your adjustments based on the changes between the two exactly yeah. exactly and um you can also if i go shift r on the keyboard um you can put a reference photo so if i if i drag the photo that i was editing before um you can compare it so like mm. if I see that the photo on the right, oh, it's more blue and I want it to be more green, then you go to the hue slider here and then you push the blue to be more green, right? To, mm. So that you can compare it and you can put it side by side and you can, if it's going to be a set, like if it's going to be as a carousel on Instagram or if you're going to print them out as a set on your wall, yeah, um, you want them to be matching. And so you use the reference view here to be able to, you know, tweak the colors and, and ma try to match it. Yeah. Um, which is what I do quite often because when I do carousels, you want them to match, like when you swipe the colors to be matching. Um, and so here right now for the second image, I find that the bottom part is a bit dark. So I'm going to put a graduated filter and bring it up mm. and try to bring more detail in the corals at the bottom. So if I do that, and then I think it's a bit too bright now, but you can just tweak and like obviously increase the saturation to bring up a bit more color, mm. um, change the hue a little bit. So it's like you, if you want it a bit more red or like, you know, you can just play around with, with what you want to bring back. Yeah. 
So I think like see the difference is like that's super dark and then I can just bring bring that out a little Such bit more. Such a huge difference, yeah. Yeah, because then you can see what's underneath and you can see what's what's there. Mm. Um, and if you really want to, you can even replace the bottom with another photo that you took, you know, which is what we're going to do after. But you could also mm. apply that same technique to this photo too. Yeah. For example, like, oh, the corals here don't look as good as another part of the coral over there or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm thinking when I'm on the shoot, right? Like if I'm shooting this, because obviously there's a lot of elements that, you know, it, it, like my wife's pose could not be as cool or whatever. And like, mm. you might want to mix and match different photos. And I think that's completely fine because you know, I took all the photos and I, I have a vision that I want to create. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so like you could, you know, potentially I like the pose here, but I like the corals there. So like you can kind of mix and match. Yeah. Um, here I'm going to maybe make the, the top part a bit darker so that it brings back more detail of the below the surface a bit mm. more. Um, probably add a bit more contrast push the highlights down um but yeah like like before like you want to um bring you want to just have a look and have a think like oh what would look nicer like you can you is the top of the image a bit weird or a bit too bright then you can just bring a graduated filter if the bottom of the image is too dark then you put a graduated filter kind of thing like mm. it's sort of just like going by feeling and intuition i guess when you're editing mm. like i like to like if I move a slider left, I'm like, oh, I don't like that. And I move it back to the right. I don't like that. Then you kind of find the medium to find yeah. where that slider should live in your brain. Mm. Um, and again, you can also add like a, a radial filter around the subject, um, invert that and just like play around to see like, how can you make the subject pop, pop a little bit more? Yeah. So if I add that contrast, you can see like how the shape of the, the subject you know, is more defined. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, if I, you know, add more black, you could see like it's more pronounced and mm. it pops out a bit more. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, have we got two questions for sure. you as we're going along? Um, are, th are all these same adjustments available on Lightroom Mobile? Yes. Um, Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom Classic, and Lightroom all pretty much do the same thing. Yeah. Um, I think for Lightroom Mobile, you get all the tools except for the for the local adjustments. So like the graduated filters and the radial filters come if you have a subscription to Creative Cloud. Right. But if you don't have a subscription to Creative Cloud, um, it's free. Um, everything, all the other sliders are free to use. Like so, you don't need a subscription. Right. Well, there you go. And um, yeah. the other question was, what was your biggest challenge shooting underwater? I think just the unpredictability of it. Like things are moving really fast. Um, you're, you have to concentrate on floating. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another thing yep. that you have to think about. Um, also just like the camera, the, if you don't have a viewfinder or like, luckily my action camera had a viewfinder, like it had a little screen at the back. Right. So I could sort of see what I'm shooting. Um, uh, if, if your action cam doesn't have a viewfinder, you just ha kind of have to click and hope kind of thing yeah, as well. Yeah, kind of guess, yeah. Yeah, because with a viewfinder, you can click it and then you can kind of like hover above the surface and you can kind of see like, oh, that kind of turned out okay. Mm. So then the settings are okay, so I just keep clicking. Yeah. Um, without a viewfinder, you kind of have to set like the shutter speed to be you know, fast enough so it's not blurry. Um, with like a turtle moving fast, it's not going to be a moving blurry turtle. Yeah. Um, so you need th to set your shutter speed to be like fast enough. You need your ISO and aperture to be, you know, set correctly. I think that's sort of probably the, ch the most challenging bit in underwater photography because there's so much going on. You're not like on the ground standing still. You actually have to float. You're moving constantly. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And you have to just press the button. If you see something cool, press the button, press the button. Like, um, and same with recording video underwater too. Like you press the button and you, you want to be able to record, you know, smooth video somehow. Mm. Um, so yeah, it works both ways. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, cool. 
So again, I can sort of paste the previous settings to this other photo that I'm going to use for that blend image. So if I paste that, um, it's going to bring back the coral straight away. Yeah. Wow. Like that's like instantly. In like a click. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is cool because like you can see all these fish everywhere. The corals are nice, and I like the lighting of the the, the light streaks here. Mm. Um, maybe I'll just play around with it and like make it a little bit more blue. Um, but that's just again personal preference, right? Um, but when I try to paste the settings onto this photo, which is the surface photo. Um, it's not going to work. Oh, yeah, it's, it comes out really weird. Right. Because it's not it's underwater like a and Polaroid yeah. or something like kind of super yeah. saturated. Yeah. So for this one, I usually just would just go from scratch. I would just edit them, edit you know how I would normally. Mm. Just um, it'll just like it'll just be super quick because we're going to bring it to Photoshop soon to to make it even better. But essentially, um, you know. You're just gonna look and play around with each slider one by one and see how you can, you know, make the the blues pop out more and like the green on the island and the trees pop out a lot more as well. Um, it's a cool yeah. little island. Is this like yeah, a little it's called island the Low Bungalows on it or something? It's called the Low Isles, and so like the company we went with for this snorkeling um, snorkeling experience. Um, they get you onto like a a, a speedboat and you just like speed to this island from Port Douglas. Right. And you basically have the whole island to yourself, which is so cool. Mm. And then you you snorkel off the off the island. So like you don't go jumping in from a boat. Wow. You just walk in from the beach and you just snorkel in and it's like such a like it, it was a I think it was a better it would have been a better experience than jumping off a boat. Yeah. Because if you don't feel like snorkeling or if you're tired, you can just go back and just like chill at the beach. Yeah. Um, and it's nice. Mm. Um, a really, really good experience. That's cool. And the island is like super cute as well. Like it's so tiny. Yeah. Like you can literally walk half the island in like 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, again, like this was shot on my action cam. So the raw file, you kind of need to work a little bit harder for it like you could just need to push the sliders a little bit further left and right mm. um but you know just like a little bit left and right here and there makes a few tweaks and it makes a pretty big difference already and again it's like personal preference so what you what you like and what you you know what you prefer so if you prefer warmer tones then you should edit it to how your eyes like them mm. So how I'm editing it right now might not be what you like, but it's sort of what I'm thinking in my head right now. So you can kind of visually see what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think it's, I think we're very close to bringing this into Photoshop. But like the main focus for this, because I know I'm going to be editing something below, the main focus is to just get the colors of the top um, as, as, um, as close to what I like as possible. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna add a bit of sharpness to, to sharpen the image a little bit. And then a tiny bit of noise reduction, but I think I'm happy with that. So that's the before looks like that and the after looks like that. Yeah, wow. Um, and so now when you're done with that, you can right click it and you're gonna go edit in and then edit in Adobe Photoshop and it literally bring that photo straight into Photoshop. Man, that's cool. While that's loading up, um, where, when you can, where's the next mm -hmm. place you want to travel? Well, before this lockdown happened, I was supposed to go to New Zealand. Um, right. And it was a, for a friend's wedding. And uh, yeah, it was, it, the wedding's supposed to happen on the 7th of August. So I was, I was supposed to get to New Zealand the 6th of August. Um, but we've cancelled the trip now because of this lockdown so no, I'm sorry about that hopefully uh, it'll be New Zealand because obviously there's a the probably the biggest chance of travel is to New Zealand because of the travel bubble happening right um, but you know if another bubble opens up with another country I'll, I'll gladly you know <laughs> jump on it yeah I think the first step is to get vaccinated first um, I think I think Australia is a little bit slow on that at the moment so mm -hmm. we'll see how we go 
Yeah, might be um, a while away, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're in Photoshop. Um, I'm gonna actually bring the other image in as well. So I'm gonna right click this and then edit in Adobe Photoshop as well. So both of them are open at the same time. Um, so now, okay, so both are in Photoshop. So we've got two files here, top in, uh, in these two tabs. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this first one to four by five so that I know what composition I'm going to be working with. Um, the island's a little bit wonky, so I'm just going to turn the rotate it a little bit. And because I'm going to put something on the bottom, I'm going to put like the island in the top, on the top sort of rule of thirds line. Right. So it doesn't matter if there's like space at the bottom that's not covered. Um, you can, you can, we're going to fill that in with the, um, we're going to fill that in with the other photo. Yeah. Um, so something like that, I think works. And also what you want to do is untick delete crop pixels so that you could like re crop later on more often. So if I had that ticked, I crop it and then all this will be just deleted Yeah. around the corner. So now where's if that, I double click tick box again, can you just show me that tick box again? So if I click that and then there's a, button here called delete crop pixels right, at the top. Okay. Yeah. At the top. So if you untick it, it means that you can crop it. If I, if I say that I don't like this crop, I can make this crop like this now and I can make it bigger and like the image is always going to be saved. Yeah. Um, cool. okay. So now we've got that sort of good composition that we like. I'm going to copy and paste this image in. So I'm going to control a control C and then control V and it's going to land on top. Um, and looking at this, it looks like the light's coming from the left corner, from the left side. Mm. But, and so at the moment, this image, the light's coming from the right side. So I'm going to first free transform and then flip it. So flip horizontal so that the light's also coming from the right side. Nice. Um, and then what you're going to do is change the opacity to 50% just so we can see what's uh, the layer below it. So now you can use shift and control um, and you can sort of move it around in place until you kind of find, you know, the right sort of spot for this image. You can also free transform and make it bigger or smaller, um, whatever you think would look right, I guess. How, would much look... how much bigger could you make the image? Like how much could you stretch before it like gets, you know, too um, pixelated you can, or anything? You can stretch it quite a bit. But I think, um, see how if I go control T, it already gives me that bounding box. Mm. So that is the right, the same scale as the image below. Right. So if I push this, you're already kind of stretching some pixels. Mm. So it's okay to stretch a little bit, but you don't want to stretch too much. Yeah. And if you go smaller, it's fine as well, because smaller is fine. Um, but if you, you don't want to go too small to the point where like you have to fill in this gap. Yeah. Um, so usually I like to keep it, um, the, I, I like to keep it around the same scale. Um, so now let's say, let's say I want it like that. Um, and all you have to do is bring a layer mask in. So this is the layer mask button down here. Click it on when, when your top image is selected, the top layer is selected, click it. And then you want to get a paintbrush and you want to right click and make sure the top color is black. So that, which means that you're, you're going to be hiding the, the, the layer. So if you right click, you can make your brush size a little bit, a little bit bigger and you want to make your hardness zero. So there's no like, um, hard edges. Right. So let's say I go with like a thousand brush. We can start off that way and then we can just start brushing the top away. And it's literally just like, just brush it bit by bit until you get to that surface and until that surface sort of blends in with the bottom. Nice. So that's sort of already like getting there. Yeah. So you get that water top, bottom, bottom layer. And again, like this is not like me trying to cheat or whatever. It's sort of like a hack to, to see how, like if you don't have a dome, and you want to get mm. an overwater shot and underwater shot, this is how you would do it. Cause yeah. then there's no really other way to get an overwater shot and underwater shot this clear. Mm. Um, so you just have to combine two images 
in Photoshop. Yeah. So I've got to ask, because you mentioned like the kind of cheating or um, like saying, you know, a comment or two, like, does that come, does that come up when you're like, Hey, here's this photo that I've edited um, and I've created. Mm. And then do you find that some people like, well, if you didn't take it in camera and just upload it straight away yeah. to Instagram it, like, is there a group of, is there a community of people that think that way or I think is so. it just a couple of trolls or? Um, I think there is like a, a, a mindset out there like to a certain few group of people that are like, if it's not out of your camera, it's not straight out of your camera. Uh, it's not pure photography or whatever. Right. Like there is, there is that mindset. Yeah. But like, I mean, like for me, photography is just about having fun. There's, there's not many, like, I don't like to set rules on myself. <laughs> yeah. Like I just like to create things that I think is, is fun for me and mm. what I enjoy. And, and, like if I'm not able, if I have a vision and I'm like, I want to create an image that's like above the water and below the water, I could do it in two ways. I could go buy, go out and buy a dome. Mm. Um, and at the time I've never done underwater photography. So like, I don't really want to invest in more things that I don't might not be using in the future. Yeah. Um, or number two is to find another way to, to create, to create it. And so, um, I didn't know that this was going to work either. So I went out and, and I shot the top half. Uh, I think this is cool. The, the surface image. Mm. And then I shot under the water. So in my head, I'm like, I'm going to give this a go. And if it works out, it's awesome. If it doesn't work out, then maybe next time I try underwater photography, I'll get a dome or I'll try something right. else. So like, yeah. it's just about a, uh, you know, a trial and error process. Mm. Um, no, cool. so, now, so now you kind of have this over under image. If you want to tweak the bottom and and not affect the layer mask, you can just unclick this chain so it doesn't link. So your layer mask is not linked anymore to the photo. So once, if you click the image again and you right click free transform, you can kind of move it around um, and not affect the layer mask. Mm. So for example, before this fish here was like hidden under the under the top layer, under the yeah. bottom layer. We want the so fish. if I bring that down, and I can kind of bring that fish back. Yeah. Um, and like you just play around with the composition until you see, you think it's it's quite nice or quite cool. Um, you can just make it a bit bigger. So something like that. I think that's kind of nice. Mm. Another thing you could do is you can start adding adjustment layers. So if you're not liking the colors of the bottom here, you can um, click this button here for adjustment layers. And then you can do, let's say, hue saturation so it adds another layer on top and right now this hue saturation panel what you can change these sliders are up here and because it's at the very top and it's not clipped on to anything if you move the slider it'll affect the whole image right right uh, which is what you don't want so if you right click and you go create clipping mask it'll only affect the layer right below it which is the underwater layer the the coral part mm. so now if i just tweak it, tweak it a little bit. It's like, I'll go to the extreme. It'll only affect the bottom. Yeah. Um, so now you can just play around until you, you see that, you know, the color matches better with the top. Um, you can add a bit more saturation. You can also add another. So if you click that layer, you can add another one. We could do like color balance, for example. Um, and because you clicked on this one, it's already clipped. So that arrow means it's clipped. So these two are connected to the underwater layer right and it's just so, the one below it not every layer below it it's just yeah, the, so one, just the one below, below it. it yeah yeah so you know it's clipped on because there's an arrow mm. um so then you can now do like you know play with the color balance and you can push it to more cyan or more magenta or more um green like just play around until you you're happy with the colors sort of similar to lightroom right mm. um and you can also do this with the top with the top layer. So you can also do, let's say I want to adjust the color balance at the top and you can clip it again. So now I'm creating a color balance adjustment layer to the top and tweak the top and see how you go. So I'm kind of happy with that. Let's just, let's just say we're going to end it. Um, what you can do now, what I like to do is, for me, when I look at this, I see that the the top here is a bit a bit dull like i i personally would like some more action at the top so like i okay. want to add some clouds for example um i would do Control shift alt e on a 
on a Windows or Control Shift Option E on a Mac, I think. And it basically just merges all the layers into one. Like it's it's basically just like creating a, a layer of all the, the, what you've created into one layer. Like every, so this would affect like every single thing that you have. Yeah. Like shown. So, just like, so it, whatever's down here that's yep. showing will just be created into a new layer on its own onto one layer at the top. Mm. Um, and then there's this like sky replacement tool in Photoshop. So if you go to edit nice. and then you go to sky, sky replacement, it's actually been like quite handy. It's like very fun tool yeah. to, to play around with. Um, and it's just loading at the moment. It's loading the preview, but literally like that, it's affected your sky already. It's already changed the sky. Yeah, it's pretty wild, isn't it? Um, like I didn't even need to do anything. I literally clicked the button. Um, you can also preload your own photo skies that you've taken yourself. You don't mm -hmm. have to use the presets that they've got here. Um, so these are like the bunch of presets that you can go like all out and go crazy. Like if you click this one, it doesn't make sense, but you can. Yeah. Um, you can click this one, you know, you can play around with whatever. You can even, if you click this one, you can make the watercolor more purple. So to, you know, to play around with and, and just get creative yourself. Um, but I think the best one in this scenario would just be this. I'm just going to click OK. Um, you can also play around with like the shift edge and fade edge and brightness and temperature. You can play around with all that um, and like lighting adjustment. So it affects the rest of the image and like it's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, you click OK. It creates a bunch of new layers. So it, it puts it in a little folder. Right. And so let's say I don't like the tone of the blue here. So you can again add another adjustment layer um, to the top and only affect the folder below. So now you, you know, I want the blue to be more cyan, uh, more like aqua. Mm. So then, yeah, like that. And so yeah, just like that, you've changed it pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> like very, very, very quickly. And you can still um, you like can, adjust the, yeah, do what the you're doing now. You, you can know, yeah. tweak it as much as you want. Yeah. Exactly. So now let's say I'm happy with that. I just go file, save, and it's going to save automatically and then bring that like compressed file back to Lightroom. So I'm just going to exit Photoshop. Uh, um, I'll just like, I'll just let you and everybody know we've only got a couple of minutes left. So yep. just uh, three minutes left. So that brings it back to Lightroom already yep. edited as you wish. And then Usually I like to do another like color grade pass on it, which right. is right. So now you know, that you've got everything collectively together before you say post it or save it or whatever you want to do with it, you'll do one more kind of eyeball through all exactly. of the settings. Yeah. And like you have, I have this turtle image as a reference so that I could, you know, put it side by side and, you know, edit as try to match it so that you can create like a cohesive set with each other. Mm. But yeah. That's, That's pretty awesome. much what I wanted to show today. That's Hope awesome. You guys found Great that timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think I think we did. Um yeah, that's that's super cool. I love seeing the sky replacement in in practice. I remember when it came out there's like the cheat tree generator and the sky replacement. Um I love seeing I it in practice. I don't know what is the tree really generator. Well. You can like generate a um, tree in Photoshop. We could play around <laughs> with that on Thursday. Yeah. I've never done that before. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, <laughs> it's quite fun. Um, but Sky Replacement, I'm seeing a lot more practical uses for it, which is great. I think someone, I think a dev got really excited um, <laughs> and the Photoshop team went, let's make trees. Um, but oh, wow. It's actually pretty cool. Um, but, uh, but that does take us to the end. We've only got one minute left before we'll be jumped off. So please join us uh, again on Thursday. So same time, 48 hours from now, um, we'll be going live with Demis and um, we will be talking about reels and TikTok, um creating this stuff i'm a bit out of my element here so <laughs> if you want to laugh at me as i ask really dumb questions there that's that's always a good time um but yeah how to get the most out of your reels um and TikTok, and uh we're having a bit of a chat before the stream just about all the instagram changes and everything um pushing you know algorithm pushing a little bit more to video than uh used to do static images it's been a slow change yeah. but it's definitely happening a lot now yeah. um so tune in to get some tips we'll have a bit of a chat about it you can ask questions as you're going um, and uh, we'll have some fun with that. So thanks, thanks everyone, and thank you, Demis. Thanks for your time, as always. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Flynn and Adobe, for having me. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in two days' time. See you on Thursday. Bye, everyone. Bye.